Hi guys, it's Mrs. C here with cycle three, week four. Woohoo! We are one sixth way through the year. Super excited. Um, today was awesome and we'll just jump right in. So for geography today, we have the lower half of the southeastern United States um, and we started with Louisiana. I went a little out of order than it is in the guide, but that's fine. They don't have to know them in order. So um, we started with Louisiana and then went um, across all the way down to Florida. So um, we did an L in Louisiana and then an M in Mississippi, an A in Alabama and a G in Georgia. And then Florida, I drew a little F, but I always turn Florida into an alligator. And to help us remember the way the states go, I sit, we made an acronym that is little or large, mean, alligators, grin, ferociously. So, um, again, we went over all the capitals and said those with, um, with them, but then we just put an L in Louisiana and in Mississippi, A in Alabama, G in Georgia and F in Florida. And we talked about the capitals as we did them. Um, usually what I would do is I would do a state, have them say it a couple of times, move to the next state, say it a couple of times and then kind of re repeat. So anyway, um, so yeah, that was what we did for geography. Um, for science, we got up and we jumped over, I have these little, I got these at the Dollar Tree, I think, the Dollar Store, um, a couple years ago, and they're just like little dry erase um, circles. They had all different shapes, so I bought a whole bunch of them, and um, I had put these on the floor and had them jump over them while we said them because we didn't jump for math today. We did something a little different, so we just said you know, three types of, or three parts of the nervous system, and then we jumped over them as we said them. And then at the very end, we just jumped in place and said them all together because they kind of took turns. So then for math, since I did do something different for math, I have these fun little dinos that I found in the party section of Target umpteen years ago, I don't know. They, they might still have them there, but they were in Target. They're just those little like plastic finger puppets, so you don't have to have dinos. I said they were monsters and then my son corrected me. But we uh, gave each kid a dino. And then um, I don't usually print things out for class. I try to handwrite everything, but these have been on the uh, Facebook tutor group and they're super helpful. I am a cheapo and printed them in black and white, but also I wanted them to be able to focus on the numbers. Um, and so there's sevens and eights and I just put them in a page protector because at the time I wasn't sure if I wanted them to cross them off with a marker or what, but then I remembered I had these. So we just went through, sang our song and we had our monsters like tap their noses on them and you could have them, I don't know, kiss, jump, whatever, however you want to do that. We did it slow, we did it fast, we sang it soft, we sang it loud. And then for the eights, I let them actually take them off their fingers and we had them hop from one to the other number all the way around. So um, these were really helpful, especially with the little ones, because when I just have them written up on the board, sometimes I think it's hard for them to follow along with the numbers. So this was really nice. Um, I'm, gonna, I'm not going to use it every week, but this was helpful. So that was math. Um, timeline this week, we start with early Native Americans. So you're going to make a, a sign language F for feather. We're going to put it up here. And then we're also gonna do gold for the ear. So early Native Americans, cause they wore a lot of jewelry. And then Israel, you're gonna bring an eye right into your chest for Israel and it divides into two kingdoms. And then from right here, you can just put another finger up and go sideways. And these are sign language H's. So it's Homer and Hesiod. And then we have Rome founded by Romulus and Remus. So this is a sign language R, you're just crossing your fingers. So Rome founded. Romulus and Remus. And then we're gonna have Israel again, and it's gonna fall to Assyria. And our sign for Assyria is our bow and arrow to so Assyria. And then we're gonna do Assyria again. Assyria falls to Babylon. This is a sign language B. I'm sorry for my loud kids in the background. Our house really echoes. Oh well, you're all homeschoolers, you, you know. Um, so Assyria falls to Babylon. And then we have Lao Tzu, Confucius, and Buddha. So they were all philosophers. So we're gonna make a sign language P and the easiest way to do it is to do P signs and then your thumb's gonna touch your middle finger and you're gonna point it down like this, okay? So they should kind of look like this. So 
Lao Tzu, and the, so you're gonna circle it around like the gears in your brain are turning. So Lao Tzu, Confucius, and I tend to go Lao Tzu, Confucius, and Buddha. Okay, so that is timeline. Um, for Latin, we jumped on the Latin train, and um, oh, for timeline, I will tell you. So those were the signs. I have these fun little um, wands that I found. I don't know if you can see that they're lighting up. Um, I have a I have a few of them. And so I let them come up in pairs and they use their, they use the wands to point to them as they went through. So, um, okay. So that was the timeline. So Latin, we jumped on our Latin train and I have my fun little dry erase laminated, um, construction paper again, super high tech. Um, and I put these around the room and we literally just like choo chewed around the room and took a stop at a word and said the word, and said what it meant, said the word, said what it meant, and choo-chooed on to the next word. So um, I wanted, to, I'm trying to um, intersperse some movement with sitting at the table, and so this was a way that I could get them up and moving today. So the way that you say the verbs today are erot, wain it, so I remember that like, it means came, so like the way, the way you came, so wain it, um, perheberet, so if you kind of say it slow, you can hear the word bear in there, per hair barret, hib barret, goodness. Um, so it means bear. And then creterant, which if you lend credence to something, it helps it make it more believable. So creterant, there you go. Um, for our English, we did hand motions for that. Um, and we will use them later on as we learn all of these other these other verbs in in these principal parts so you have infinitives so we're gonna put our hands together and we went like this and made the infinitive sign and then we have present so we're gonna punch forward and then using the same hand we're gonna go past and stick our thumb back like in the past and then we have present participle and past participle so infinitive present past present participle, past participle. So we did those, I did one, see if they could tell which one I was doing, just mixed it up. I had uh, the six and four year olds do it and then I had all my five year olds do it um, and we all did it together. So uh, that was English. Then for history today, um, I we listened to, I sang the song and um, then we listened to it at the very end, but uh, today I just read through it several times, except as I was reading through it, I was saying silly words instead of the actual words. So I read through it once and they got to hear all the real words. And then I read through it again. And for example, I said in 1776, the continental penguins. Okay, so they knew that wasn't the right word and they stopped me and I said, oh, it's Congress. And so they had to say it again with me. So I just replaced the words. I think I said um, the declaration of swimming. And instead of Philadelphia, I said the North Pole. Um, announcing the, I don't know what I said. I said something funny for colonists. I can't remember what it was. Just some funny word. It was random. I didn't have it written out. I just randomly picked a word from my brain. And then intent to separate from, I said New Zealand instead of England. So every time I would mess up a word, we would start at the beginning and go back through and say it all the way through up until the word that I messed up. And I'd keep going and mess up another word. So they thought that was hilarious. Um... And I'll probably do it again sometime because it was fun and easy. So that's what we did for history. So that's everything. Um, for fine arts, we were doing Tin Whistle and we did Rhythm today, which I kind of stepped into a little bit last week. It's hard for me not to. Music just all goes together for me a little bit. Um, I had made the last time and I didn't end up using them today because we already had staff paper printed. But if you don't have staff paper, I made this and photocopied this the last time I did it. So it's just for them. It's got bar lines, your staff, your measure, just to go over our um, grammar words with them. But we had staff that was, um, our wonderful director already had printed for us that was laminated. So they got to use their dry erase markers. So we went through, talked about measures and filling up measures and what, you know, what kind of notes you have to have to fill up a measure and all that good stuff. And then, um, I let them as a class create a rhythm up on the board and as they were putting notes in we talked about as our measure full 
okay, it's full. We have to put a bar line because we have a new measure now. And we went through all of that. And then I let them make their own on their staff um, that they had at theirs. And then I tried to clap it out, which be brave. <laughs> that was, I was a little touch and go there with some of them. Um, but it was fun. They thought it was fun to hear theirs clapped out and I don't think they knew if I did it wrong or not. I tried to do it right, but some of them were a little difficult. So anyway, so that was what we did for Tin Whistle. For science, we had lung capacity, which was super fun. And if you are just uh, loving this book like I do, my indescribable book, number 46, Just Breathe, which is on page 98, is an excellent little devotional to read at the beginning. It talks about how long um, you can hold your breath and all of that good stuff. So it works perfectly with this science experiment. Um, also, uh, which I stole from my own self from the last time I taught this, we practiced um, holding our breath with a normal breath and then with a really deep breath to see if we could hold it longer since it's not hygienic for all of us to be blowing water into a gallon jug and tubes and all of that. So um, my class did get to go home with their own tubing, so hopefully they can practice it at home. Um, but yeah, that's what we did for this week. So I uh, hope you guys have an awesome weekend, and I will be back next week with week five. Thanks, guys. Bye.